Thankfully, they made a sequel. Is it the perfect game? Vietcong 2 is a fever dream. The first game wasn't perfect, but it had character, satisfying gunplay and was a good challenge. When making a sequel, instead of playing on the game's strength and polishing its rough edges, the devs just said fuck it and went for a heavily scripted, short and unoriginal game. Gunplay? Fucked. Characters? Fucked. Vietnamese hooker? Not fucked. Made by Czech developers Illusion Softworks and Teradon, this game is a sequel to Vietcong. If you haven't seen it yet, I reviewed it last time, but in short, despite being hard and janky, it was a pretty good and rather unique game. So, what about this sequel? You play as Captain Boone, American Special Forces guy and brothel customer. But playing as an officer doesn't mean you've got control of anything. Instead, the game begins with you having to accompany a reporter to a party. I love that they give you a glass you can actually toast with. But of course, the Tet Offensive begins with you taking an RPG to the face. And so begins one of the dullest, most uninspired campaign I've ever played. Good shot, Davis. Now you have your first confirmed kill. You and the reporter escape the town hall. Pick one? There's a wounded soldier here! Take him to the car and let's get out of here! This place is drawing too much fire! And reach Mac B at quarters. Here you find your new squad mates, all four of them. Tommy Boy, Radio Guy, does nothing other than getting orders. Cobber, medic, he patches up your wounds if he feels like it. Dutch, New Yorker, he's from New York. And Stone, calls everything and everyone, quote, a sucker. You will hate your squad mates by the end. What is up? Yeah, we shall cover. They are immortal, thank fuck, but that's the only improvement. There's no point men, no radio reports, no fire support, nothing. Dutch can give you ammo for every single weapon now, but when cold, both him and Cobber start slowly walking towards you, overshoot you without fail, stop for a second, turn around and give you what you asked for. It is incredibly clunky. You can now tell them to stand in a specific spot, which means you can use them to soak up damage while you kill Charlies, but there's no attack, retreat or cover me command anymore. Fact is, they're not even that useful, because since the devs wanted the Call of Duty audience, you're surrounded with friendly NPCs and nobody hits fucking anything 90% of the time. And the remaining 10%? But worse than the friendly fire is that they keep fucking talking. The previous game had a pretty good response system, your squad mates would scream when hit, call for Crocker and Bronson, communicate enemy positions and tell you when they get a kill. In the sequel, however... We'll kill all you assholes! Nah, I say we just kill them! <laughs> Not only they have random, unbearable chatter, they also compliment you for every single fucking kill! Good shot, which leads us to the biggest fail of this sequel. In the first Vietcong you were clearing a jungle of enemies. Very rarely they spawn out of thin air, you were mostly going somewhere and every kill meant progress. And the gameplay was so good that they added a side mode that's solely about clearing a level of enemies. Here, half of the time, you're shooting infinitely spawning enemies waiting for a scripted event to happen. Put together the urban setting with the complete lack of penetration and this means means that you're just waiting for enemies to pop their head up so you can kill them, essentially playing whack-a-mole. The only things that make some levels bearable are the explosive weapons you find laying around. Try to save your 
You can now hold two guns, so there's no opportunity cost and Dutch can replenish any weapon, so spam that thumper. The problem is that there's no armory anymore and weapons don't carry through different levels. Instead, the game spawns you with absolutely terrible American guns that you always want to dump, ideally for a VZ-58. Just two years prior, they nailed gunplay, you had a variety of viable weapons, each with advantages and disadvantages that shined in various situations. But now there's a clear hierarchy of weapons and you always spawn with the ones at the very bottom of the gun pyramid, which will get you killed a lot because enemies have no pain state anymore and they can even shrug off headshots. Yes, that's how pitiful your starting guns are, and let's not even mention the pistol. What the fuck was that? Alright, the shooting's terrible, what about the story? Well, brothel aside, it's a string of generic shooter levels vaguely following the Battle of Hopeway City. Between each mission, we see the reporter from the beginning of the game explaining the context a little and that's it. You meet a lot of people in the beginning, including Captain Rosenfield and Sergeant Hawkins, who's drowning his sorrows in booze like I did after finishing this fucking travesty. But you won't see most of these people again, they're really just NPCs with name tags, not characters. Same with your squad mates, they very rarely have something to say. You know, aside from... Also, all the marines are chuckle fucks? <laughs> While we're here, let's use this level as an example of what your average mission is like. You return to the city hall where the VCs have established a propaganda post and a sniper nest, so of course you need to go around. First, you find the trombone gun. <laughs> then you sneak into the building and try to get the sniper. I should sneak up and surprise the sniper. Starship Enterprise, this is your captain speaking. We have boldly gone where no man has gone before, but there's still one Klingon sniper in the sector. Very sneaky. With the sniper gone, you can now go back to your original objective, save a guy. Why didn't we go around the town hall? Who knows, but now it's guy saving time. So you killed some enemies while you make your way to the guy, and then the guy saved. Yes, that's me. I must thank you. Hey, whatever. Huzzah! We should did him out. Pretty much every mission is like this. Gone are the briefings and the overall strategy. People just go, hey captain, it's time for the church level. And the church level happens. Does it at least have a satisfying climactic ending? Damn politicians. No. There's also a Vietnamese campaign with levels framed as diary entries of a guy that shoots himself. It's pretty much the same, except it's shorter, there's no wait for reinforcement set pieces, there's an RPG in almost every level, you don't start with garbage weapons and the levels themselves are more interesting. Your village gets slaughtered, there's a helicopter boss fight, you breach through some defenses, ambush a convoy. It's okay, it doesn't save the game, but it's a nice addition. Sadly, there's nothing else, skirmishes didn't make it to the sequel. You could play a cooperative map by yourself, but why bother? One last thing to point out is that while the sound design is generally worse, the music is actually pretty great. Well, that was Vietcong 2. Like last time, if you want to play it yourself, it's free on my abandonware. Beware though, the game might not want to cooperate. It's pretty short, so it's not that painful, and at the end of the day, it's just a mediocre Call of Duty wannabe and not a dumpster fire like, say, Breed. But as a sequel, definitely one of the most disappointing I've played. It's sad to see devs with good ideas trying to follow trends and completely fuck up their game in the process. Disappointment aside, it's not like this game negates how good the first Vietcong was. If anything, playing the two games back to back is an interesting experience. They really feel like two completely different games, despite being only two years apart, on the same engine, by the same devs and set in the same conflict. And I gotta admit, relieving the disappointment was kind of nostalgic at least. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya! And don't forget to like and- SHUT THE HELL UP! Excuse me!
Governor Ronald Reagan has just authorized the use of atomic weapons against the sniper. Gentlemen, please start the detonation sequence. Hello, everybody. This is Captain Pepper and his Lonely Hearts Club band. I hope the sniper's going to enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. This is Captain Pepper. Hello, people. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Good morning, Vietnam! Sniper, this is dedicated to you.